regular <laughs> reading with me. <laughs> Hi guys. It is a lovely feels like a winter night, but I guess it is an early fall night. It is a gorgeous Thursday night. November 2nd, it is Day of the Dead in Hotland of GA. It is. And I'm back for my... Sitting on the gator. My annual, uh, my annual grilling by <laughs> the sassy dragon herself. Ms. Ariel is going to uh, oh, put me in the hot seat, yes, but she wants to introduce her new channel because me she's too. getting a run around, uh, getting the big run around from YouTube. I am. So, so what's going on with your new channel? Well, for anybody out there that um, has already joined my old channel, and a lot of you have, which I really appreciate. Um, that one was called Dragon Tail Tarot, and I started it about four or five years ago. And due to lots of mishaps with YouTube, which I do go mishaps into, mishaps with YouTube, I do go into detail about it on my channel. I'm not going to do it here, but I started a new channel on YouTube called Diamond Dragon Lady, all three words together. And you can also find that link to the new channel on my old channel if you are already subscribed there. So I'm hoping it's already going a lot better, and I hope that it'll do better. All right. I that the well, I know it'll be a household word after the showing YouTube up. After pop showing bots up will leave me alone. <laughs> okay. Good luck on that one. The YouTube cop bots leaving you alone. But for anybody that hasn't seen me before, I'm an astrologer and tarot reader and musician. Not all related though together. But I've been doing tarot and astrology, teaching, writing, and readings for over 20 years. And she just did a, I, I had a little reading fun on pulling some Sancho Panza, which you can find elsewhere on this channel. All right, so what do you have in store for the folks to give us an um, idea? Of... We're just going to go over Sam's uh, natal chart oh boy. and planetary transits of the moment to see what's happening. My natal chart? It's a natal chart. Natal chart. <laughs> I didn't know you were in the Navy. <laughs> um. And for those of you who hate or don't like astrology, just click off of this because you won't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically, I, you know, I can't get it into the screen well enough, but it is a birth chart. This is Sam's is chart, it. and it is in the center. His wheel is in the center of the chart, of the circle, and right. the current planet... As long as you're making me the center of the universe... You are the center of the universe. All right, you just, as long as we understand that, who is the... <laughs> And I am the big kahuna of doom. Oh, oh, okay. I want to thank Michael Campy for appointing me as the big kahuna of doom. I have a really nice fake plumeria flower lay over there if you want to I will have a try full that rant. on later anyway, on. Anyway, that's yeah. another rant for another day. As long as you understand, I am the center of the universe. She is a smart lady. She understands that Emma Little Tail is the center of the universe. Well, all my clients are for hey now, the moment. Hey now. All for the moment. Yeah, whenever they're the, whenever yeah. they're sitting with me, they're definitely they are the center, center of, attention of the universe. They okay, are. <laughs> what's going on in the all center right. of my universe? Other so, than this margarita. All right, Sam. So this is this is always fun to look at. Um, as you know, the planetary energies have been taking a big dump on us. I I figured that out. <laughs> A while Hi. and it's it's funny Hi. because I'm certainly not the only person that has noticed it and seen it and talked about it um a lot of the other readers and people I follow and watch they've talked about how they don't really like the astrology <laughs> and I'm like yeah nobody does these days um but we're gonna really look in and see what's going on with you because you've got you do have a lot of things that are about to change and uh, have recently changed so let's the, uh, let's dig in okay um Right here on your rising, and you are you are kind of super Virgo because you do have super a Virgo. you are super Virgo because you have a Virgo rising, you know, and your sun sign in the twenty eighth degree is on the rising as well. So that makes your personality very immediate. Like it's it's you know as you know you have a strong personality, and you know you connect that connects immediately and people either love it or they don't you know it's one of those things they either get it or they don't I think but you most really of them don't, but yeah. you really what you see is more or less what you get it's very upfront when you have the sun on the rising because the rising is the sign coming up on the eastern horizon it shows you what kind of personality <coughs> you exhibit to the world at large 
um, the way that you kind of present your whole self. And even though you might feel like a hot mess, let me tell you, a Virgo rising is always a good presenter. Always. That's why you get the super host status. That's is why these things happen, because you, no matter how much of an anxious, riotous mess you might feel like you are inside or whatever, like when push comes to shove and it's go time, you know how to put a good presentation it, on it. Except when I'm having a date. <laughs> Which doesn't happen very often. I hope that'll change. <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm waiting for the Doomer Chick rising here. <laughs> the reason I think, and I've, very Doomer chick rising I've said this before, future. I've said this I've, before, I've, maybe you'll, maybe you'll, maybe it'll, maybe it'll soak in this time. We got this beautiful Doomer chick sitting next to me talking about I, how I have no chance with beautiful Doomer chicks. <laughs> Anyway, Yet he's irony, sitting next to me. I like the that. irony is not lost on me that I'm in the company of a beautiful Dumerchek reading my chart, talking about my lack of success, but any Dumerchek, beautiful or not. But the reason, Sam, that I think that you say that about romance and things like that is because, I, and I've said this to you before, I don't know if he'll sing in this time. Because you, you do the thing where I say something and then you interpret it the way you want it and not what I'm actually saying. Yeah. So, <laughs> is that a I've read, super Virgo I've trait? read for him before, can you tell? Venus at 29 degrees in the sign of Leo. So that is the highest degree planet in your chart. Yeah. The highest She's degree, up there shining? The no, that's highest, shining. She will be up there, though. Yeah. The highest degree planet in your chart is always considered the emperor of the chart. It's a very important placement. My personal top degree planet is the sun. Mine's 29 degrees. That's not a planet, okay. that's a star. Exactly, but it acts like one right, in your chart, like right? It acts yeah, like yeah, one. Right. Anyhow, Venus being in that top means that love, friendship, personal connections, and harmonious relations, whether it's business, friendship, love, whatever it is, are very important to you. Yes, harmonious it's relations. It's hugely I'm important. I'm keen the harmonious relations you, here in the and, business. And, and honestly, you uh, really just kind of love love with a Venus Leo. And guess what? You like a lot of affection. I been missing you it in my life. love affection. Venus and Leo, my sister is a Venus and Leo person, so I grew up with one, okay? They're very usually creative, um, colorful, funny, very funny, very funny. Um, and they really like to socialize. They do. And when it comes to love, they like the big traditional romantic demonstrations of love. Lots of kisses, lots of hugs, roses, flowers, dinner, movies. They like all that real... PDA. Yes. Yeah. They're PDA kind of guys. But the reason that this is challenging for you sometimes, especially when you find somebody that you really like and you're really compatible with, is because Venus is in retrograde and it's sitting next to Pluto. So Pluto is that Scorpio energy, right? It's heavy and you can be kind of secretive about it sometimes. Like sometimes you don't always get in touch with the depth of your own feeling. And the other thing is that sometimes, not always, you are attracted to intense personalities that aren't always good for you, okay? I'm sometimes, sure Dulcinea is listening to Sometimes this, they are literally psychologically <laughs> unhealthy, toxic, <laughs> because Pluto tends to be very black and white, but sometimes they are really good for you. Unfortunately, it as we know... during the day, whether they're good or bad for Unfortunately, me, as you know, we minutes. tend to attract and accept what we think we should accept and attract. So if you don't think that you'll ever get someone healthy, you probably are right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to gear your mind towards rejecting things that are bad for your romantic diet. Because if you don't, that's the kind of well, thing then you that will end happen. up with a normie. You don't want that to happen. No, but not all not all doomers have to be like a raging <laughs> psychopath either. <laughs> that that would be a thing. That'd be healthy. There is a lot of healing, I think, that has to go into your relationships because Pluto is very psychological. It digs deep. And I think it's one of those things, as you heal yourself, you also heal your relationships. Re Venus is also in retrograde, in, in retrograde when you were born. 
So I think that you are also somebody that may suffer from maybe saying something to someone you like and then later like beating yourself up because you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that or why did I say it like that or why did she say that? And, you know, it's this kind of thing that can really eat you up inside and ruin spontaneity and that kind of thing. It's also tough just being a Virgo in love because you do tend to overthink And it can be hard to turn it off yeah. when it starts. It, it can be. Yeah. And to just let it unfold. Turn also, off I would say, you notice that Venus and Pluto are in the 12th house. There it is. Right? You do go I through. Do notice you that, do right? go through a lot in this house. I have three planets I was born with in the 12th house. And, you know, it sometimes mm -hmm. does mean, yeah, going through therapy, counseling, depression, dealing with depression, all those kind of things. Because this is a very hidden house. It's very emotional. It's very sensitive. Sometimes you can be hypersensitive. I know that I can be that way. Like something will just hit you and it's like, ah, you know, you'll just have a big emotional or spiritual reaction to it. Yeah. It's also why you want like what feels like a soulmate. This is also a big reason why you want that twinkly magic sparkles <laughs> accompanying whatever romance or friendship you're in. You want it to feel faded, destined unique in some way because it is in the Pisces house and that is a twinkly magical mystical house yet again it also does deal with depression people that are not always the most available right and it can go into that realm of are you in love with the actual person or are you just in love with the idea the fantasy of the person so this is all stuff that you kind of have to grapple with when it comes to love but overall I think that when you're in something that's healthy you are pretty happy. Like, that's, you know, because it's sunny. But you do like people to kiss your ass. You do. I know. They have to. Because I Venus and Leo, and I know my sister's this way, I'm going to tell on her, is that you do have to be kind of the center of the show a little bit. It's kind of like if you feel that they're not paying enough attention to you, you'll get fussy. You'll get real fussy. And if they still don't pay enough attention to you, you will leave. You'll be like, I can't do this. The sun's not shining on me enough. It's just not enough love. You're a big cat. Big lion in love, you know. Lions just love to have sex and sleep. I mean, that's just, you know, great life. <laughs> so here's something I'm going to tell you about. All right. Now, Venus, our planet of love, relationships, all that good stuff that we just talked about, it was in a retrograde... I'm getting chills just talking about it. You see how, like, it's been traumatized. This is exciting stuff for astrology. Uh, Venus in Leo since... This, I believe it was June. I believe it was the beginning of June. And it stayed in that sign until, I think, this past month. It was there a long damn time because Venus usually only stays in a, plant, in a sign for about a month. So you had Venus and Leo here all summer long, dancing back and forth, getting stuck in the mud. I like the fact that it's getting out of this 12th house in transit. And it's crossing over your rising into your first house, which is a lot more accessible. I would say over the next month, you know, this is hitting a lot of good points in your chart. Love, relationships, friendships, chances to socialize are a lot nicer. As I head to a trailer at the end of a dirt road in a swamp. And what else is new? <laughs> You've done this before. Been there, done that. But you just need to get I'm out. Sure of, just need be to go out of the swamp. Big house party there. going on in that trailer. <laughs> you just at the end of the dirt for. road in a swamp in Florida, I, I can feel the the party energy just <laughs> I'm rocking. A, I'm a, Don't bother knocking the when the trailer cabin. is rocking. The swamp trailer. Grab a beer and come on in. <laughs> you will hear the rocking trailer at Hambone's Rocking Trailer. That's a good name for a venue. Uh, Hambone's Rock and Trailer. Hambone's Rock and Trailer. We'll have it's a music be, venue and a bar in there. It's going to be in action uh, starting in three days. <laughs> Open for business. So anyway. you see that. And that's a good thing. And that also, thing. Venus will be moving out of Le out of Virgo, which is one of its worst places to be. And it will be moving into Libra, which is one of its nicest places to be. That's oh, one of its dignity. One of its dignity signs. I need some dignity in my life. <laughs> Um, so the other things that, you know, I, I'm looking at too, you've got a lot of big planets that are on the move and I've looked at this before and I said, you know, some big stuff is shifting. Um, 
Saturn is finally going direct after a long retrograde oh, period. Damn time! I know it's I've been wondering it goes retrograde happen. five months out of the year, so it is moving direct. It'll be in your sixth house of Virgo. All right. This is definitely a time that you want to like. You talking about medical tourism and taking care of your health. It's a perfect time to do it. Um, it really doesn't get better than that. I honestly would also have anyone that's looking at you take a look at things like I know this is gonna sound dumb, but your feet. <laughs> How are your feet doing? Other than because Saturn is gonna to be trim my toenails. My my buddy always points out you can tell how long it's been since a man's been laid by the length of his toenail. <laughs> my, my toenails is it time are for a around, uh, stabbing myself in the meat of my toes from my claws. Are you trying to pass the world record of longest toenail? So, yes, as I say, it's so a maybe, direct maybe proportion. Maybe start with a pedicure, but yes, because Pisces rules the feet. Um, and Saturn does, you know, rules Capricorn, which deals with bones, teeth. teeth uh, yeah, thing. well. Um, that's been, so those are the kind of the things I would really have was, looked at, you know. My those teeth, are the things, your teeth and your the, feet, you know. My teeth and my feet. And the bones, you know, check, make your bone structure is good. Um, <sighs> Neptune has been wobbling around right on this line of your relationship house. I really yeah, think a, that's a big part of what's been making your relationship. Wobbly Neptune. Yeah, it's been around the it's been, chicks a, out, it's been all a the little time. bit crazy, and it is in opposition to your sun sign. So, you know, it can make things feel foggy, a little confusing, or a lot confusing sometimes. Um, and it's really important with that to try to see through illusions. Try not to let illusions get the best of you. Um, I don't know if you're up for an inheritance of any kind. I think I've inherited every last penny I'm going to. Yeah. Is someone going to die and leave me? I don't know if that's actual death, but Jupiter transiting through the 8th house in the sign of Taurus feels like inherited money. Oh, uh, somebody's it's getting ready to die. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'm just uh, putting that out there. Because, you know, the 8th house is sex, death, and other people's money. Uh, and when you have Jupiter there... Order. Jupiter there brings abundance, it brings, you know, prosperity, it brings doors opening, opportunities coming. Um, it can sometimes mean the ending of something and the beginning of something new. Um, it can indicate a little bit of growing pains because you may have to stretch and grow and try something you haven't tried, do something you haven't done before, um, but you're about halfway through that cycle. That That's that's why I say that. I was like, are you, are you up for an inheritance? Because that looks like, you know... And I don't think the wandering is going to stop. I think that you just, you know, no, you love to travel, you love to move, and that's going to increase, if anything, over this next six months to a year. Yep. You're going to want to travel and move around even more. Um, Jupiter will also be crossing over your um, your natal point of fortune, your part of fortune. So this is, to me, it's it can be a really good time of making money in unusual ways because, you know, Uranus, the Aquarius planet, is in there too, which is a rebel, a radical, or weirdo. So it's like if you're making money doing strange things, it's easier to do it. <laughs> than All it. right. Like if I'll you be had, a millionaire. If yeah. you had stayed in a, in a more traditional career, it would be harder for that to happen. But because you've been doing something of your own, making it actually becomes easier so that's you know that's a nice thing um anything square big money will start rolling yeah, you're, in you're definitely i mean you're itchy 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 like you really want some changes you really want things to to shake up and break up and wake up you, bit you, of a rut here yeah, it's right there it's right there you're on a squaring itself in your chart i see it I'm on a squaring there's yes. the 90, that 90 degrees. degrees it creates it creates friction and you know, those two both like to shake things up. They're the ultimate. Like, you talk about bugs in a jar. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, this is the energy of shaking up the snow globe. And, like, want to see things, you know, change. Want to see things change. So, All right. We're going to shake careful what up you wish the jar. For, right? We're shaking up the bugs in a jar. But there are great opportunities right now. I mean, you've got some really nice placements here. You know, Saturn in, in Capricorn is being supported both by transiting Saturn and by transiting Jupiter. That's getting a lot of support to foundational things that you've been working on. You know, anything to do with that home and home areas. This is this is always what you've been born with, right? And it's funny because as much as you like to travel, when you're in a place that you like, 
you really like it too. Like you really feel good when you're in a place. Then that you wetter like. comes along, <laughs> and then you're like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, Saturn is old man winter. I mean, come on, you know, there he is. So let's let's throw some cards. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my god. Okay. Mini reading or full reading? <laughs> we did a mini reading on Sancho. He was quick. Somewhere in the middle. Let's pull. Okay. All right. That sounds good. I'm just. Go that's why I only brought out a few decks. I'm just gonna start with a main theme of energy for you. Main keyword. See what's what's going on with Sam, spirit, universe. Anyone wants to talk to us for his best and most positive outcome, please. We'll have to pick the same ones as Sea Adventures. There you go. I'm telling you, and it even looks like it's in a jungle. See that? <laughs> it looks like a Costa Rican waterfall, exactly. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. And on the bottom, what did I say? You have a lot of opportunities, and there's the opportunity card. We have opportunities for adventure. Yep. There you go. There you go. We all That's do. Pretty wild, Just but it taking them that much. I do often up. find that the things that will come up in the cards are a good reflection of what's in your astrology. It's not surprising. All right, so we've got our little Halloween deck. We're still playing with that one, which is really fun, even though we can't really show all the artwork on the screen. But these are these are a fun little tarot deck. All right, let's see what we got for Sam. Ooh, that one wants to come out. So we're just going to put that to the side. That one wanted to jump out. It did. It looks like a mummy. It's the hierophant. <laughs> it looks like a mummy. Yeah, it's our Halloween hierophant. <laughs> All right, here we go. Turn this upside down. I don't want to turn it upside down. Now, you're, you picked them instead of me, so is that... Yeah, which I usually do because you're not a dog. <laughs> it's really different. Okay. All right, so right like in the center, right in the right in the middle, we've got the. So we ten. got the fool on the bottom. So what does the dog look? Oh, he's got a black cat. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So the ten of bats, right in the center. Um, this is the current present energy, kind of a focus, the heart of the reading, um, which is the ten of swords in the traditional deck, and so. This is really you having gone through kind of the worst of things. Like, what's the worst that can happen? I think you've already kind of experienced uh, it. No, um, a it's lot a, worse could happen than anything I've ever experienced. But it's betrayal. It's backstabbing. This is <laughs> letdowns, disappointments, things not maybe going the way you wanted yes, to. A story of my life. Miscommunications and things yes. like that. But the thing about the 10 is it's usually full circle. That's why I say it's kind of like... You know, it's it's coming to an end of a cycle. So that's actually not a bad thing to pull. So what is circling around here? Yeah. And we have justice. So, you know, again, I don't know what it is. Why are you pulling Leave, off a second I'm deck? just clarifying it to kind yeah. of see what that could be, you know, pertaining to. But... To me, yet again, it's like I, I was looking at the thing with this, you know, are you inheriting money? Is there something with money? This justice card, you know, sometimes it can indicate legal stuff. So I it just, I don't know what that could be, but keep it in mind. Um, but usually this, like I said, Sancho got the justice card. And I said, you know, this is all about things being brought to rights. Maybe if people didn't treat you unfairly in the past, that means that, they, you know, something better happens for you in the future, right? It's a really nice kind of turn of events. In the immediate past, we have the Queen of Imps, which is the same as the Queen of Wands. This is Leo energy. We're just talking a lot about Venus and Leo and its part in your chart. So, you know, it's that I'm just getting this, like, in my head, keep love alive, I, you know? And I don't know what that's for, who it's for, but to me, it's like Queen of Wands knows her worth you know, and it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman that I'm pulling these cards for. It doesn't matter. I get a feeling that this is like, this is where you're coming from. And it's like, you still have a lot of heart and soul to give. And I feel like 
you know, you gotta know your worth. It's okay if you've wasted time or energy on other people. It's fine. You still have your soul. You still have your essence. And it's like, it's just important to value who and what you are, right? And not put yourself down just because, well, you know, mean, either you're single or what. It's just, you know, that I'm that the big kahuna of doom. Right. That Exactly. That's, you know, exactly. she is. This is like, that is that, like, I'm awesome kind of. And I want you to, to kind of embrace that a little bit more. Yeah, look at that. Ace of Pentacles. You have a lot to offer. Oh, yeah. As simple as that gets. I mean, it's like you have a lot lot in your in your world. Your world is very rich. doesn't have to mean you're monetarily rich necessarily. Sometimes it can mean that. Sometimes it can mean Absolutely money past. Money really okay. coming in. Okay. Okay. This is immediate past. This isn't like uh, long, long ago. Wasn't that but long sometimes ago, the Ace of Pentacles of to me can say you have a lot of richness. You are the funniest person I know. So I'm just saying, <laughs> it takes a lot to get to be the funniest person yes. in my estimation because I know a lot of funny people. Going into the future, more Leo energy. So I just feel like your Venus what? sign, your more Venus, Leo your Venus sign is really activated because we've got two big Leo cards. That is the Leo card with the lion and its strength. My card. dear sweet ex-wife was a Leo. Was she? Uh, okay. Well, that makes sense because you uh, have Venus and Leo. You would attract Leos pretty easily, but you also have a lot of that within your own surround, right? Um, this is also a card of getting to know yourself. It is a card of getting to know yourself because the woman in, in the strength card is always the symbol of our spiritual nature and the lion is our physical nature. This is our fussiness. This is our depression, our anger, our upsets, our ups, our downs, our jealousies, our feelings, blah, you know, roaring. And this is, our, this is our spiritual this side, trying to calm it down and, and chill it out, okay. right? And it's that balance of getting to know yourself. Um, Page of Wands. See, I mean, I just feel like there's something new coming in. It could be Leo. You know, it could be a Leo, I've you know. been there, done that with Leos. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, with somebody with Venus Leo, with a Leo, it's like both of you are kind of wanting to be star of the show, and that can be the thing. On the bottom, what you should really, of course, always focus on... My number one card. ...is your number one card, which is the Fool card. Yes. That is, you know, it's Aquarian energy, so it's That's definitely... The greatest card in the day. ...doing your own thing, taking the leap of faith. Sancho has been replaced by the Black Cat. Trusting the... that the universe will sur will provide, uh, you know... It not, is a bountiful universe. Not worrying too much over what next step to take. Uh, yeah, which you have been kind of like, what am I doing next? This is really again and, encouraging. And then, then when a when a trailer at the end of a dirt road in a swamp, I think, man, I don't believe I've been saved. <laughs> I I know when to jump. We got on a that lot door. of the suit. Page of Wands, Two of Wands. This is to me very Aries. I feel like new beginnings with this. This is just new beginnings all over the place for, to me right. because this is fresh. It's like new, playful. Having more fun, Sam. There you go. I know, having more fun. On the top, crowning the spread, is the Four of Ghosts, the same as the Four of Cups. So to me, when it comes to the Dulcinea thing especially, because this is the emotions, you know, the cups are more emotions, this is to me somebody sitting there and looking at the thing that they feel like they can't have, that's not working out, and they're putting all their focus on it to the point that they don't see anything else that could be coming in. So keep your eyes really open, right? Don't don't put all of your focus into that thing that you can't have because you're going to miss the tap yes. on the shoulder from somewhere else. It's like, hey, there is actually other better the things over here. Chicks approaching from the from the left <laughs> shoulder. Pay attention to that. That card. That card is a, that card is a toughie because we all do that shit. We all do that stuff. You know it. That's very human nature. It's a focus on the taboo, on the thing that we just can't have, you know? Forbidden fruit. Even though it might not be good for us. Yeah, see, look at this Queen of Swords. Right on top. Very picky. It's like, be a little more picky about what you accept. And I wouldn't, you know, the Queen of Swords is Libra energy. And well, to me, she she runs book. a very tight ship. And it's like, if someone's bringing negativity, um, drama... Chaos or chaos. issues into her life, she's like, no, no, thank you, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't invite anything or anyone that I've brings. I've never invited drama trouble, from a doomer chick. In trouble my life. or drama, I wouldn't do it. <laughs>
So let's get you some advice. <laughs> and we had your Hierophant card over here on the side, which is, is Taurus, which is very stable, Beware grounded. Any and we debilitating effects of boomer chicks. Is that my advice? No, just maybe you don't focus on only one, but, especially yeah. the one that you can't have right now, or maybe ever. You don't know. We don't know. That's a, that's a, that's a rock and roll roller coaster. <laughs> uh, so any newer chick who I can have, let me hear from Just come tap me on my left shoulder. That's right. Let him know. So I'm easy to find in a trailer at the end of a dirt road in a swamp in Florida. So what is all this you're doing this here? This is advice stuff. Advice. I would say okay. with, with um, suggested approach, I again, you know, I would really avoid giving in to a feeling of lack, a feeling that you're missing anything or missing something. Um, sometimes that can indicate needing to try a different approach, especially in business or in managing money because it is a pentacle card, right? It sometimes can indicate that maybe you feel shut off from something that, again, that you want. And it's like it's, try, it's time mm. to try a different approach. It's time to try something else. Don't just stay out in the cold. Yeah, and it, well, there you go. It's try a different approach when it comes to heartbreak and matters of the heart or disappointments <laughs> in love. There you yeah, go. It's that just, was right on. I mean, it's like if you keep, yeah. tr it's the keeping trying the same thing and keeps getting the same result, That's and it's not the, the result you want. You've got to change the approach. Um, hopes and fears is the six of pumpkins, the six of pentacles. To me, this is Libra and Taurus energy both. Um, something that's very strong in your chart and in the transits right now. To me, this is equal give and take. What you need to know is that whatever you bring into your life, whether it's financial, especially financial, um, or emotional relationship-wise, there needs to be equal effort. Like, you don't need to feel like you're doing all the work, that you're making all the effort. You're the one always calling, always going, always seeing, always doing, always paying, always did it. If they're not meeting you halfway, don't do it. If it's, you know, same in business, you, you've got to have that, that reciprocity, that equal give and take there. Ooh, these were jumpy. Yeah, because what you really deserve is, is the whole happiness, the ton of cups, not some, not some halfway effort, not some halfway attempt. Mm. Judgment card and the mm. hopes and fears. Woo-hee! <laughs> You know, there it is, rising from the dead. The judgment card to me is the higher vibration of death. The death card really symbolizes the actual, like, you know, death and loss and grief and transformation, whereas the judgment card is the next level where it's like you're actually coming back from the dead. New life springing up, new chances, new opportunity, kind of that second chance feeling. It's kind of all over this reading of new beginnings. I think there's a part of you that wants new beginnings and there's a part of you that's nervous about them at the same time. That's why it's in the hopes and fears position. It's kind of like, yeah, I want change. It's like, ah, change. <laughs> it's a loaded word. Yeah, it is. Sometimes we really want it until we get it. And I feel like, you know, when it, when it starts, it's going to be fast because here's that eight of wands, which is Sagittarius. It's like, this is rapid movement. This is, this yeah, happens like, quick when it happens, over right? The, over the Seneca cliff kind of. And it might make you feel like, this is too much, too, too quick. Like, can I handle all of that? I also think you might be a little more nervous about change. That happens very rapidly. Um, outcome, six of cups, six of ghosts. Very nostalgic energy, you know, by, especially by the end of, you know, November. This is kind of like, mm, people from your past, oh my gosh, memories, childhood memories, um, maybe talking to someone you haven't talked to in a really long time. Um, to me, it is a card of healing the inner child to a degree because it really digs deep into those old family memories. Um, it is one of the only cards that deals with the past in the tarot directly, right? Um, but it does usually deal with sweet memories, good memories that you kind of want to build on and make more of. Um, a lot of people make a, a lot of that card indicating like a past love coming back or things like that. And that's certainly a possibility, but it's certainly not the only thing 
that comes with that card. I don't know, do you have any past loves you'd want to come back for? Uh, <laughs> Lord. Do you have any? Because, boy, the Six of Cups is on the bottom of the deck, too. Um, it's clarified by the Empress. This is definitely Taurus. It's Libra. You got Taurus here. You got Libra with the Justice card. You know, this to me, the Empress is also like the ultimate woman, like the ultimate feminine energy, divine feminine. It's like all the queens together as one. Um, ruled by Venus. We talked about how Venus is a really big deal in your chart. Um, that could just be honestly you coming to accept and appreciate and love yourself more than you have in the past. That could be that too. Like in a genuine, really good, wholesome, caring, nurturing way. You know, because this is like, it could just be you taking really good care of yourself. Six yeah, of yeah. Cups is also like cancer energy and cancer is very nurturing. Um, on the bottom, Five of Swords, another Six of Cups. Um, five of Swords again. This is, should I stay or should I go? This is absolutely like crappy people that are bad for you, that lack integrity, that when you hang around them, you end up doing things that you wish you hadn't done. It's that kind of people. People that'll step on someone to get ahead. Ew, ew, not my favorite. So if you have a choice to walk away from people like that, I usually choose walk away. Yeah, Six of Cups. You know, you, you could be dealing with very positive people and elements from your past and also some really negative elements and people from your past. So you got to make the choices accordingly I want to deal with there. Um, overall, you know, we had that jumper card. The Hierophant, very strong. Taurus, it's like stand your ground, stay in your lane. <laughs> Stick to what you know is true. Um, embrace your own personal wisdom because that's what that really symbolizes. Embrace we are so far. Accepted on a cellular level. As well, well as yeah, <laughs> that's a, that that's goes a, without saying. Say, <laughs> it, boys, how fucked we are. <laughs> After a while, it just, you know, you kind of you kind of get comfy with it. It's like, well, dang get it. Comfortable with your doom. <laughs> You said you were going to do the CEO, more like the high priest of doom. The high priest of doom. That wasn't on the list. That was not on the That wasn't, that on, wasn't on your bingo list. card. It wasn't on Michael's list for me. <laughs> I am going to pull one affirmation on this one for you. Get a, get a summarization of this read. All right. You had a definitely, ooh, protection. Earth element. I like that. I will take high. some earth element protection. Uncertainty lurks around you, but you are shielded by the powerful energy of heaven's light. The birds sing you a message of hope. Feel safe. Hope! <laughs> and uh -huh. have no worries. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mount uh -huh. Tai, the most uh -huh. sacred ancient mountain, uh -huh. is here to support and uh -huh. protect you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> And abundance was on the, uh, on the other side, so I like that too. Uh, <laughs> Sir snaps a lot. All right, Sam. There All you, right. There you that are. That was for, a little bit of a mixed bag. For at least the next six months, yeah. Uh, okay. I would. I, what I would say, wrapping nice. this up for for me, is that there is a lot okay. of new opportunity. I have a blank slate for a the lot next of, six months. A blank ooh, slate. I have nothing to do. There's a lot of with my life for the next six adventure, months. Adventure, restless energy. I do feel right. like you're really like open for things. Yes, I am um, wide open for suggestion for the next six months. And there's some healing to do, both emotionally and physically. Yeah, but I feel like overall, what this is getting at is is really encouraging you to value yourself more. Um, Accept good people, but really shut the door on. I'm gonna go people, find me some good tru Trump tars. Troublemakers, right? It's like you don't need the troublemakers or the drama starters. Set down right in the middle of the biggest Trump tar belt in America. <laughs> find me some good folks <laughs> that I have a lot in common with. <laughs> Put that Trump sign right out in front of my trailer to protect you. <laughs> So they don't and invite a few alligators over and oh gosh feed them trump tards <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Just don't let Sancho get close to him. We need to keep them safe from that gator yeah. business. Sancho and gator bait. No. <laughs> That's the only gator we need around Sancho. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was the name of my dog, Lucinda Alligator Bait. For years. Oh, that's funny. All right. All right, Well, guys. that was a fine example of what Thanks this... Thanks for uh, stopping by. So, one more time, your new channel. Diamond Dragon Lady. Diamond Dragon Lady. Okay, you can hear this lady all week long. Yeah, or at least once a month. I post. Once a month is what you're doing there? Going for once or twice a month to post I'm readings for all for, the different signs. I'm going for 60 times a month to... 60 times a month I do that. Well, there was nothing in here about necessarily being a workaholic, so I don't think you're working too much. Well, I work less in my 60 videos a month than a lot of people work on one a month. So. That's, true. That's true. All right. All right, y'all. Have a good night or day, wherever you may be. <laughs> Bye, guys.